know why Trump hit Syria. I've studied Trump enough to know his calculus. He is a nationalist. He is a patriot. He believes the U.S. should control its own sovereignty. But that doesn't mean he won't use the globalist infrastructure to carry out operations he thinks are for the greater good of the United States and the planet. And I disagree with the president's calculus. Now, a lot of people would say, tune in next segment and I'll tell you. But I've laid out a lot of questions here because I want to get people thinking. But I know why this happened. I don't just know this from my sources or my research. I know it from watching what happened with Trump last year and watching everything else he does, how he creates uncertainty, how he creates concern, mystique. One year ago, almost to the day, he struck with 59 cruise missiles a Russian air base in Syria with no evidence that they'd launched a chemical attack. And then I said, this is about getting North Korea to the negotiating table. Well, it brought North Korea to the negotiating table. And now I told you two months ago, before it was even announced, that North Korea had already agreed to the basic terms of denuclearization and a unification with South Korea within a decade and that he would be meeting with Trump. I got that from high-level sources. And over a month later, word for word, what I told you came out. Now, this information I don't just get from sources because they're not even exactly sure what's going on. But I know this is about total uncertainty to Russia, total uncertainty to Syria, but more importantly to China and North Korea to have Mattis come out and say, we don't have any evidence. It'll take weeks to find out who's behind it. To have Pompeo just say we killed a bunch of Russians last week very, very cryptically to put out mixed messages when other governments don't do this. People call this bad coordination. No, Trump's bringing the economy back. Trump's broken the globalists. He's outsmarted a bunch of different groups. But I don't think you can do this with nuclear war and nuclear powers. I think at this point it becomes too dangerous, and I disagree with the president, though respectfully. So you got Mattis saying we're not going to strike. Trump knows full well that it's the, it's the rebels doing it. Trump announced a week and a half ago that he was going to pull out the next month, and this attack happens. Now, I know for a fact Trump blocked McMaster for a year wanting to take out Assad. And Trump told me they weren't planning to take out Assad. And Trump then later days after I told you that was in Bloomberg that he'd said no boots on the ground. So there is a very sophisticated calculus going on here, and it's for Russia, it's for Iran, it's for Syria, but it's really for China and North Korea to think, wow, General Mattis said they weren't going to strike. And then hours later they do. That means the president isn't listening to anybody. So that's what's going on. But here's the deal. Even if it makes China and others sit up and pay attention, it makes North Korea roll over. You don't blame Assad and their regime that's fought so hard against Al-Qaeda and ISIS and radical jihad and that's a doorway to Europe. When they have all those other enemies who are trying to bring down Syria, who are Israel and, and I'm not Israel's enemy, but they are is, enemy with, with Syria going way back to Assad's dad. And you've got Turkey that's out of control and Erdogan pressuring us to do this. This is all about Trump having cake and eating it too. Okay, we'll hit some limited stuff. We'll tell the Russians where we're going to hit. They'll pull out days before. They'll have a bunch of rhetoric. We'll have a bunch of rhetoric. It'll put Iran on notice. It'll put North Korea on notice and they'll roll over harder. But you've got a tiger by the tail there. You're playing with fire. And you're allowing Al-Qaeda and ISIS to reconstitute. Trump says they're smashing them, but the truth, our military has taken them, rebranded them, and is getting them ready right there on the Iraq-Syrian border to start this whole thing over again. And you can think, well, maybe Trump doesn't know. Well, there's a lot of people in the government who don't let the president know what's going on. I got like 80-something employees. I can't keep track of it. But still, at a rhetorical level and at a iconography 
optics, visual level. This is a major ideological betrayal on something Trump knows completely. If he'd have been a little sideways on Syria, I still would have voted for him. But that he was so hardcore and understood what was happening and knew the globalists had created Al-Qaeda and ISIS and were destabilizing the border with Europe. And if he hadn't put out hundreds of tweets detailing it all, I wouldn't be so upset right now. We're going to open the phones up coming up. And you can agree with me. You can disagree. But I'd say 80% of people who are conservatives, Christians, or libertarians agree with me on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Infowars.com. 20% don't. But man, out of liberals, they're just like, let's nuke, let's kill Assad, you traitor Jones. Or let's kill Putin. Let's have war. And they are just fruit loop land. And how did it become that where Alex Jones, Tucker Carlson, Laura Ingram was President Trump, but now I guess he's not on that team. And then we just go with no evidence Assad did this, worse than the stuff in Iraq. At least Powell showed fake trucks and anthrax in his hand and all this other stuff. The British trucks they showed have been sold to them in the 80s to fight the Iran-Iraq war. They were hydrogen balloons tethered to a truck, so you'd have cameras on it directing artillery. They said that was an anthrax machine. It was all lies. So I, I'm very decisive when it comes to issues, Second Amendment, property rights, Christianity, you name it. But when it comes to this, I get the world's a mess. I get there's different powers. I get there's different structures. It, it's, it's, it's geopolitical. And I'm glad Trump's getting Saudi Arabia to stop funding the globalists and, you know, getting them to stop funding jihadis, they claim. But this is really about putting Saudi Arabia in charge in Syria. And it's a fundamental, off-the-rails change from what the president said he was going to do, and we're allying with bad people. Even if it sends a message to North Korea, I get all that. You know, people out there that look at the geopolitics, they go, Jones, you just don't get the larger ramifications of the region and what the message it sends. No, I get it all. The world's complex and out of control because we've got Machiavellians playing games. If you deal from a, a directness, chivalry, strength, honor, courage, will, historically, that's what creates civilization. All of this backstabbing and sneaking around and double dealing and duplicitous stuff is what you get out of inbred mentally ill populations. And I'm sad for Islamic nations from Indonesia to Iraq to Pakistan. Muslims are a billion, 300 million people, but they account every year for one half of the deformities in the world. Pakistanis are less than 1% of the British population. They're 36%, 37% of the deformities because they marry their sisters and cousins and all the rest of it. And I want them to stop that. Just like the British royalty stopped doing it. But this is a lot of mental illness. And you've got the Islamic view, the Arab view of the, 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 you know, the enemy of my enemies, my friend. This is all mental illness. And it's never going to stop. And it's never going to go away until people stop inbreeding. We have to wall it all off like you wall off rattlesnakes and not try to tame the rattlesnakes and not try to do all this and not, I mean, look, taking down Assad is the globalist UN plan to open the border up to Europe to make a major Islamic corridor through Turkey, which Turkey wants. Turkey wants to project Islamic power into Europe. They have Turkish parties in every area of Europe. They're already threatening to quote last year, burn down Europe if they don't let Erdogan be politically involved to have parliamentary control. This is an Islamic UN globalist takeover allied with the whole Hollywood system. Nourish a probiotic-friendly environment in your gut with prebiotic fiber by InfoWars Life. Help the good bacteria thrive and support overall digestive health with our specially formulated prebiotic fiber, a mixture of clinically studied and organic acacia, fruit, and flax fiber. Prebiotic fiber is soluble fiber that ferments in the gut to help feed good bacteria which helps you digest food, absorb nutrients, and even support your immune system. InfoWars Life's cutting edge formula only brings you the highest quality organic and clinically studied ingredients. 
Cheap prebiotic fibers are used up only at the beginning of the colon, but our premium organic acacia fiber is slowly digested by the good bacteria throughout the entire colon for maximum prebiotic effect. Head to InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-888-253-3139.